I'm going to hang up. Welcome back to another edition of the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show, sponsored all season long by Wholesale Supply Group. They are open to the public. Once again, Jake and Mason, I'm Andy Morris, along with Walker Valley head coach Drew Akins. And, uh, Coach, we're coming off of, a, of a, our first region loss of the year uh, at Ray County. Tough weather conditions, uh, down a quarterback. Uh, some positives that – you know, we're going to talk about as we work to our uh, film session in the second half of the show. Uh, but if you could just kind of give a breakdown of not only your assessment of the game, uh, but your message to the team after the game. Yeah, listen, I thought our defense played outstanding. I think we got to start there. You know, when we look at the positives from the other night, uh, defensively we played really well. You know, the first drive, um, obviously, you know, the penalty there, that would have been a fourth down. You know, it's still – I told our staff the other day, yeah, it would have been fourth down, but they were going for it at that moment. So, you know, you can't predict whether the fourth and three, whether they would got it or not. Uh, but obviously held them to six points throughout uh, pretty much the, the, the rest of the game um, and, and thought they played well even, you know, in the points that they did, did give up. Um, they, they played awesome. They played with great effort and great energy. Made it really tough on them throughout the night. You know, the front that they give, uh, that that offense, obviously they see that offense a lot. We run a very similar offense. Uh, but the front that they give them is so difficult uh, to compete against. So we're really proud of our defense and what they did. Uh, you know, when we go went back and looked at the film and we looked at, uh, you know, mistakes that we made throughout the night, I thought one big glaring issue that we had uh, that, that hurt our offense was our special teams. I thought our special teams uh, all around played poorly. Every single phase of special teams uh, had a breakdown at some point. From the opening kickoff that uh, the kick wasn't exactly uh, what we needed, and then the, they returned it to the 45, which is gonna, gives them a short field. And then it felt like from that point forward, we were playing behind uh, you know, on our end of the field for the rest of the night. And when you're already down a quarterback and you're already struggling to move the ball when you have to go 80 or 90 yards every single time you have the ball. It just is a tall task. And, and obviously, uh, we didn't do, do a good enough job preparing our offense to be able to, to weather that. Um, the weather did not help. But also, like, they had the same weather. Uh, I don't think the weather was so much of a hindrance that it cost us the game. Uh, I think, you know, our injuries, you know, having six starters out, um, it is, has been difficult on us and trying to find the pieces uh, to put in the right places to, to be able to function uh, has been difficult and and you know it is it's one of those things this has really never happened to us we've never had this many injuries so uh, we're, we're figuring out what to do with it I thought we had a good practice yesterday we have a great plan today for practice that I'm really excited about and I, I hope you see uh, us put Jacob in some much easier situations this week uh, as he's making his second start in his career uh, in this situation. Yeah, glad that you brought up Jacob Curley, uh, who started at Red County last week. Really, uh, we felt like we talked during the game uh, broadcast, we felt like he managed the game well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you talked about uh, the weather, the you know field position. Uh, it felt like from the offensive side of the ball, we were able to move the ball quite a bit. Uh, with the exception of you know being able to air it out because of the rain, uh, but Jacob did a good job. Uh, you know, situationally, we saw his one yard gain just yeah. knowing where the sticks were and literally dragging his feet and, uh, or excuse me, driving his feet to make sure he got to that first down marker. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it seemed like you hit on it with the field position. When you have those type of weather conditions, field position is always relevant, but it's even that much more relevant when you're kind of one dimensional offensively. Yeah, it, listen, it was a difficult night offensively, absolutely. Um, but it that absolutely made it more difficult. Um, when when you're starting at the 10, you're starting at the 20, you're starting at the 15. I mean, I felt like every single drive we're starting in, in really poor field position. Um, and then and then you look up and they're starting two drives. You know, that their two scoring drives in the fourth quarter was three yards and a field goal, four yards and a touchdown. So seven yards and they got 10 points out of it, uh, where the defense really, after the first drive, didn't give up a whole lot of yardage. Uh, so just – it, it just was one of those nights where things didn't go our way. We cost ourselves a ton. I'm not taking any credit away from what Ray County did. They went and won the ball game. Uh, but, but I feel like we put us in a lot of situations 
uh, that put us in, in really bad issues where we, we couldn't overcome uh, some of the things that we're dealing with right now. Uh, so we've got to do a better job on specials, coaching special teams. Uh, I think it comes down to that. And I'm not at all blaming our players for any of that. We've not done a good enough job coaching those uh, special teams. So that's something we've got to do better at. Yeah, Coach, you talked about defensively you played strong. Uh, doing that with some starters out as well, the <laughs> linebacker position is one that, that comes to mind that's really banged up. But when you play a team like Ray County, linebacker play is pretty important. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the guys who, who stepped into those roles did a good job. Just kind of speak on, on those guys who kind of filled in some, some roles for some injured players last week. Yeah, you know, obviously we're, we're missing Zeke. Uh, we're missing Mason Alexander. Those are two starters at the beginning of the year that – uh, haven't played, you know, since Polk County, and and obviously Mason hasn't played since uh, Cleveland. So you know, missing two starters at backer, I think Caleb Jackson's done a great job coming in, uh, really has solidified that position at that outside backer uh, position. He's done a great job over the last few weeks, uh, and then Tyler Goldman, you know, he's he's really stepped in, uh, and, and we knew he was going to rotate a lot. He was already rotating a lot with Zeke to start the year. Uh, but now as a full-time linebacker, he's played really well. You know, we gave him player of the week a couple weeks ago. Uh, just as, as really stepped in that position. And then you got a sophomore with Braylon Beard that uh, is just a ball player. You know, he, he, we knew he was going to be really good. Uh, but being able to watch him this year throughout and, and kind of make his progress, he's so athletic. I think that's what sticks out to him. You know, he reminds me, and I don't want to put these expectations on him, but he athletically reminds me of Eli. Uh, you know, Eli Denton, a, a kid that was obviously one of the best backers to ever come through here. Braylon has a lot of the same characteristics when it comes to athleticism. Uh, he's able to run down lineback or I'm sorry, running backs uh, from the inside linebacker position. So, you know, as a sophomore, him getting the reps he's getting right now is going to pay off over the next two or three two years uh, uh, just astoundingly, and I'm really excited about where he's going. Uh, but, you know, getting all three of those guys back, you know, we, you know, we're getting a ton of experience from those guys. Uh, Lane Ferris on the inside is another young guy that's playing a lot of defense, um, a, a defensive line. I think Troy and Jack, Troy Diskevich and Jack Shantz have played outstanding. Dylan Sharp has been super solid in the middle. So when you look at our run defense, you know, we actually outgained them in the in running the ball the other night. Um, just, you know, we just couldn't sustain things. You know, with yards, I, I told Mr. Varner, he said, you know, we outgained them the other night. I was like, yeah, if only you got points for that. I goes, if, if there was a, you got a touchdown for every so many yards that you outgained them. But it just, we just couldn't sustain it. They did a great job of, uh, you know, the one time we did get down there, we had a ton of momentum, it felt like. Um, and we had the false snap and weren't able to get in the end zone and then missed the extra point or missed the field goal. Um, and then and then penalties just kind of <coughs> wore us out on offense. But, um, you know, I, I think our defense is playing so good right now that they're going to give us a chance in every single ball game. We've just got to – we've got to find something that we're good at uh, over this week and go get great at it so we can put some points on the board. Yeah, one, one other player that I feel like has just taken a step forward each and every week is uh, number two, uh, Burns, man. You know, they come out – Ray County comes out – last week trying to stretch you out wide mm -hmm. in the second half kind of hurts us a couple times but then you see him coming downhill hard and start yeah. setting the edge and flushing everything back inside just kind of talk about his progress as a player first year starter right yeah so yeah listen it's funny right we've done this together now a long time right when you start talking i was like he's gonna say ab <laughs> i almost said ab before you did because uh he's playing really good right now i've been really really happy with uh, him all year. He's been a solid kid for us all year. I think our safeties are playing really well uh, as a whole, though. You know, Malachi Nunez has played a ton of snaps for us and is playing really well. Had an interception against Udawa. Spencer McCooch had the interception against Udawa as well. And AB has been solid throughout the year. Uh, so it's, it's been really good to see us on the back end. You know, I think they completed three passes the other night. I had 23 yards passing the other night. So I think our back end did a great job. Mike, on the vertical ball, he got injured on the tackle, stayed in the game. You know, they attacked him immediately, and for him to be over top of it, Jerry did the same thing on our side right uh, before halftime. So we're gaining a lot of experience on the back end, and hopefully that experience on the back end uh, allows us to have a great end to the year when it comes to making plays with the ball in the air. We've got a that's the one place I do feel like we're falling short defensively. Uh, and those guys will be a big part of this if we get it turned around. 
we got to create more turnovers. We're not creating enough fumbles. We're not creating uh, enough interception opportunities. We've got to be able to get our hand on the football a little bit more than we are right now. Uh, we're plus one on the year. I think that was something that was really special about last year is, uh, you know, we were plus 20 at the end of the year. That's And I'm not asking our guys to be that. Like, you know, we have a, a new quarterback and now another new quarterback. So the expectation is not that. That was a special season. But we've got to do something to get into the double digits, uh, you know, get that number to 8, 9, 10. And if we do that over the last four games, I think we'll have a ton of success. Uh, you mentioned uh, Rob Varner, who's the team statistician. My man. Does a phenomenal job. Yeah. He provides Jacob and I always with our wears, stats. Always wears the other team's colors. Yeah, yeah. He's had his, he had his Eagles out. stuff on yeah, just last found Friday. Out. The Philadelphia so, Eagles, yeah. but, you know, he big, big Philadelphia time. guy. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy, man. He's been awesome for us. Yeah, but he, he provided us uh, with the game stats. And uh, to your point, Walker Valley, 155 yards on the ground. Ray County, 139 yards on the ground. Through the air, Walker Valley 63 yards, Ray County 23 yards, and that one one turnover uh, for Walker Valley and two turnovers for Ray County. Uh, penalty 71 yards for Walker Valley and 65 for Ray County. So when you see those things, a lot of those things kind of playing into your favor. To your point, the field position was extremely huge. Uh, in this game, and we talked about it during the broadcast as well, it seemed like we were getting chunk yards, chunk yardage, and we got to talk about Roman Yulo and his mm -hmm. continued versatility uh, being able to play quarterback or wherever you need him. Uh, we saw a lot of those yards come from him. Uh, he had 107 yards rushing yeah. last Friday night. So uh, it was more, it kind of seemed like it was a red zone uh, getting there and the clock not running out or, you know, different circumstances. Yeah, just honestly just didn't have a good enough plan. Yeah. And, and that's to be expected. You know, we didn't find out till Wednesday that we weren't going to have our quarterback. And it did change a lot of what we were going to do. Absolutely. We didn't have that big a plan to put Roman at quarterback as much as we did, obviously. Um, you know, him attacking – outside and they were able to add hats to the box uh, and I, I don't necessarily think that that wasn't going to be their plan anyway I uh, just think Dosen would have been more uh, experienced and more mature to be able to make those throws and and I would have trusted it more let's be let's be honest I mean we didn't throw it a whole lot till the very end uh, and and you know I probably would have trusted Dosen more because I've seen him do it more often don't want to put Curly in a situation where you know, he feels pressured to go make a play. Absolutely. Right? Dosen's been in that situation. Uh, you know, Jacob hasn't. There's so something I'm, I'm to be said to for game him. experience. Yeah, trying to protect yeah. him a little. Uh, and, and, you know, one of those things that we probably could have let the let the reins off a little bit, but just didn't want him to feel like he had to go win a ball game for us. Uh, so we tried to do what we could do to move the football and just couldn't do it consistently enough. Uh, and that's something we've got to figure out this week. We've got to figure out how to go score some points. Uh, against Howard you know that's the good thing about football is you know we get a, a great opportunity this week to go get back on track uh, it's going to take a lot of work we've got to figure out what we're good at we've got to continue to play defense better we've got to get better on special teams those are the focuses for this week you know our special teams play has to get better uh, and, and the guys that are involved in that know that like they're not passing the blame on anybody they know hey i've got to do my job better than i'm doing it and we've got to coach it better than we're coaching it uh but we've got to make sure we're putting our offense uh in better situations to go score and putting our defense in better situations to not give up points and, and special teams has a huge hand uh, in making sure that happens yeah, perfect. Uh, glad you let us in to, to Howard. Uh, again, this Friday night, the Mustangs are on the road for another region game, third region game of the season at Howard uh, down in Chattanooga. If you could just kind of tell us a little bit about Howard. I know in the past they've offensively had a heavy run game. Uh, it, is that pretty much the same as what we've seen over the past few years? Yeah, very similar. You know, they got uh, two guys, number three, number two. I'm so bad with names, but – uh, those two kids can really play. They get them in open space, try to get them on sweeps. They are throwing the ball a little bit more than I've seen them throw it in the past. They throw quick game. They're throwing sprint out. Uh, they're throwing vertical balls, those kind of things. They've hit a vertical ball against several teams that we're watching film on them, excuse me, against. Uh, so we're going to have to make sure that we're paying attention on the back end. Again, an opportunity to go get our hand on the football uh, and go create some turnovers. Uh, you know, the ball's in the air and it hangs in the air for an extended period of time, we have enough speed to make sure that we recover 
uh, and, and we're able to get under those footballs and make contested plays on them. And hopefully we can start coming down with those footballs uh, as, they're, as they're in the air. And then defensively up front, uh, they're going to try to run power. They're going to try to run sweep. Um, you know, and, and they're bigger bodies up front. They got a couple kids that can really break loose on that. Uh, defensively, they've always been so good up front. Um, they're, they're not as big as they've been the past few years. I Listen, I think, and I've said it on this show, the last two years I think they had the best defensive line in, in our region. I don't necessarily think it was close. Yeah. Uh, they had some absolute dogs up front. They're not the same as they have been, but they're still big-bodied kids. Uh, that are strong, and, and when they punch you, you can you can see on film they, they got a really good punch. I really like their middle linebacker. Their middle linebacker is a good little player. Number 12, he strikes you. I watched him against East Hamilton. Pulling guard comes around, and he pulls, and normally a pulling guard on a linebacker, that guard's going to win most of the time. And, and you saw the kid left foot, left shoulder, and, and put East Hamilton's uh, lineman on his knee. He just buckled him. Uh, so really strong kid, has a lot of power. They got kids that are, are flying down from safety trying to make tackles. They do a good job of getting you on the ground. It's one of those things, um, you know, that I've played this kind of game where the athleticism is so high on the other side. They do a great job of getting you on the ground and making you snap it again. And we've said this at the high school level, and you have to snap it over and over and over. A lot of times that leads to mistakes. So we've got to make sure that we stay focused for 12, 14, 16 play drives that we're able to finish those drives with touchdowns when we get down in the red zone. That's been a place where we've really fallen short is red zone scoring. You know, we've had several red zone trips this year where we got zero points, and we've got to make sure we're focused that on that offensively. Coach, uh, I, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. You may or may not be able to answer this question. Uh, quarterback situation, yeah. last week, Jacob Curley with the start, obviously mm -hmm. dosing out with the injury, the head injury. Uh, is Dosen going to be available this week? Do you know an answer to that yet? If not, what could we expect to see from Curley? Yeah, I don't I don't expect him to be available this week. Uh, I, I Honestly, me and his dad talked the other day, and I, my message to him was, hey, I want him to be as healthy as we can possibly get him before. Because my fear is, you know, he, he gets cleared and we, we bring him back and then he has a setback. And I really don't want to get that setback where we lose, you know, we lose him for, for McMahon in the playoffs. If we have to lose some games up front with him, not lose as in lose the game, lose as in him not the playing. The playing time. Yeah, yeah if, we, if we lose him playing for the next two games to make sure that we have him throughout – you know, McMinn in the playoff run, then so be it. We've got to find a way. We've got to be able to coach well enough to put us in a situation where we can win these ball games. Uh, and it's going to be difficult. I mean, we got a super talented team with Howard, uh, East Hamilton, who beat us last year, and Coach Nance I have a ton of respect for. Uh, he's a very good coach. And then Pure Academy coming back, and they're going to be super athletic yep. too. So, we, you know, it, it's – you know, trying to make that decision. But ultimately, I want to make sure that we don't put Dose in a situation where he has a setback, where, you know, we bring him back too quickly and, and he gets hurt or, or he's just not quite ready. Um, and so I don't expect him to be back this week. We're going to reevaluate him on Friday. Uh, if he feels like Friday he's made some progress and the doctors feel like he made some progress, we'll try to get him into protocol, you know, the, the return to play protocol. Uh, if we don't have it by Friday, then okay. Then we make a plan for East Hamilton and we check him again the next Friday. Uh, but ultimately, I want him to be as healthy as he can possibly be and without fear that we can have a setback. Yeah. You know, I don't want us to bring him back early and have a setback that cost him, you know, throughout the rest of the season. So we're going to try to be smart with that. We're going to protect that kid. Uh, he wants to be back. He's actually back at practice today watching, which is really exciting. It was the first time I've got our guys have seen him. Uh, so it was exciting to have him back in the building and just around our guys. You could kind of feel uh, the, the atmosphere kind of go up a little bit with him around. Um, but ultimately, we're going to let the doctors make those decisions. Uh, and, and we're going to make sure that we trust those doctors and trust Dosen to be honest yeah. with us. Uh, because he's got to be honest about what he's feeling and make sure that we don't rush back too quickly. Well, Coach, I'll go ahead and, and speak on behalf of Jacob and myself. Uh, first of all, we agree 
player safety first. Uh, I think that's a wise decision. But this is a game where the Mustangs are heavily favored. So if you're looking at the schedule and looking at bringing uh, your quarterback back out of that situation, this is kind of a good timely game uh, to, to have that decision. Because, again, I know you don't like to overlook any opponent, but the Mustangs are heavily favored in this game against Howard. Yeah, probably on paper we are. I think until we score some points, yeah. uh, that's a, that's a, I mean, as a as the offensive coach, we've got to figure out how to score some points. Absolutely. I mean, our defense is playing so well right now that I really feel confident that our defense can put us in great situations. We've got to make sure we figure out how to score points to make it where it's it's not an uncomfortable win that we're able to just go win a ball game. And uh, until we do that, you know, we and and we got some things that I'm going to show you here in a second, and I'm excited to show you on film the things that we are going to try to attack with and show you that Curly can do it. And, and hopefully he has the confidence after a week of starter reps uh, that we're a little more confident on, on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, well, Coach, we're excited to break down film. We're going to send it back for a break just before we just start this, and then we'll break down film from Ray County and kind of wrap this thing up. So we'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show, sponsored all season long by Wholesale Supply Group. They're open to the public. Once again, I'm Andy Morris, along with Jake and Mason, and Walker Valley Head Football Coach Drew Akins. And again, our favorite part of the show is the film breakdown. Once again, if you're listening on the radio, you can get on YouTube and Facebook, get on the Walker Valley YouTube page, the Mix 104.1 YouTube page, and you can check out the video portion of the film breakdown, which we highly recommend. Mm. Well, one of my favorite parts, a little more difficult to see this week uh, with the with the video the other night. We weren't a, or with the weather the other night. We weren't able to get our drone shot, but I want to show you all some personnel things that we did the other night uh, that we're going to continue to do moving forward, uh, and and then some things that I really hope you see us progress to. Uh, with with Jacob and his abilities and and hopefully can get to the point uh, where we feel really confident in, in him doing those things and he can feel very confident in what he's able to do. So the first thing I want to show is this personnel group. Uh, personnel grouping, uh, you know, when you when you take your quarterback out of the ball game uh, and the defense, especially a, a coaching staff like them that are watching personnel groups come in and out of the game. Uh, you know, when you take your quarterback out of the game, they know automatically it's a wildcat. And we're putting Roman in the backfield, you know, right now, 90% of the time, the ball's going to him on some kind of uh, power or counter or, or um, you know, outside run. We've tried a little outside run the other night. So this is a way for us to not tip our hand, essentially, uh, to the defense. So what we do is we start uh, with – Push the wrong button. We start with the quarterback at a normal position, running back at a normal position. We start with Hudson out at receiver and Roman out at receiver. So that's a basic, normal formation that we have all the time, right? That's This is pretty typical for us. And then we call this explode, so the quarterback will just say shift, shift, and you'll get a bunch of movement here all at once. So you'll get the quarterback go out to receiver. You'll get Hudson go back to the backfield. The running back will step up to a sidecar, and then Roman will jump back into quarterback. And as long as we're set for a full second, we can snap the ball quickly. And what that does for us is now we can keep them in, in a normal defense. It makes it harder for a defense to shift. And now you're counting on 15, 16, 17-year-olds to make that decision instead of the coaching staff making that decision from the sideline. Uh, so it allows us to play a little faster and maybe catch them off guard. And I think that's a little bit of what happens here. We get them in that – uh, base front, and you can kind of see the end of, you know, Curly running out to receiver here. So you see him shifting out to receiver. Uh, they go back to the base defense that they were already in, and we're able to catch them on a counter play. Do a great job, and we're really close. Man, if we just go and get that block, we're really close to being able to cut it yeah. back out the backside. Uh, that's something we've just talked about, you know, throughout this week of things, the little things that we're not doing super great that we've got to go get better at. Uh, but you do see, I mean, we get a 19-yard gain here uh, because we were able to keep them in the defense we wanted them instead of them being able to adjust uh, to, to a Wildcat set. This second play uh, is actually a look at, okay, now they know we've taken out. So at this point, Roman's lined up at quarterback. 
uh, Curley's out of the game. So now they know we're in uh, a Wildcat set, and look at how different the defense looks. They're in TNT right yeah, now. Yeah, now they're in TNT. They're in a bare front. They got uh, nine guys in the box. All of their eyes are on Roman, so it makes it a little more difficult. Uh, this is a play that we haven't ran a whole lot of, of this year. This is buck sweep, so we're going to go uh, down off the edge, down on the TNT guy, down on the nose, back on the other four eye and gap hinge this guy. So we're going to handle all the down linemen, and then you'll see that we get one puller out to this outside guy. We're going to flash fake and then go to, towards the buck sweep uh, and allow that guard to kind of lead us. But what you can see is it freezes those inside backers with this flash fake just enough to where we're able to get outside and create a big gainer. But you can see, that's the big thing I wanted you to see was the difference in when we explode to that front, we're able to keep them in a three down versus when we line up in it and now you got nine guys in the box and they pretty much know, hey, in some form or fashion, number six is going to get the ball here. Uh, but this this is a good play for us. Uh, it was an adjustment that we made going into the second half. Uh, Roman does a great job gaining yards here. Uh, we were so close throughout the night when you watched that play. We were so close throughout the night of that one big play, and we just couldn't break the last tackle. Kudos to them. They did a great job of getting us on the ground uh, in those situations. But you kind of see what we were going for and why we did the personnel things that we did. The last two I wanted to show you are just some things that we're, we've got to get comfortable, uh, you know, curly comfortable doing these things. These are base offense things. So this is, you know, throw the hitch or let's come out here and let's run our flood concept and find a way to get the ball into these guys' hands and make it as easy as we possibly can. So this is late in the game, but you see that we're able to get outside. Uh, we do a great job here uh, slipping this. Nobody handles the fullback. It's good timing by our fullback. Really a ton of space. They're catching the ball. You can see the closest defenders are, are 10, 5, 10 yards away from us at every every angle. So it allows us to go get a big gainer. That was a fourth down play, actually. Uh, we're able to get outside and, and make a make a throw and get a first down. So this these are the things as we're preparing for this week. Hey, what are the things he does well? What are the things that he can do consistently? And let's put him in as many of those situations as we possibly can. So that's one of those situations. Another place where we feel like, you know, we can put him in a, a, a level of comfort uh, is, is anytime we can put the ball towards number six, right? So this is late in the game still. I think you're going to get a similar look here where you have, you know, four defenders covering four receivers. That's what they're in right now. Um, and, and I feel like this is a, a look that Howard very, very possibly could give to us. So as we see that, you know, we got to put our guys in situations. Uh, we got to put him in a situation where he's one on one, he's throwing to Roman or throwing to Hudson. And when he's in those situations, we've got to trust him to make those throws. Because what you see, his arm talent is there. He's got the ability. Uh, we've just got to trust him to do those things. And that's something uh, as a first year guy making his first start ever as a sophomore. You know, it's something as a coaching staff, we've got to find things that we trust him to do. And anytime you're one-on-one, -on -one, we've got to trust him to be able to throw a ball where our receivers, number six, number eight, number 16, number 25, we got guys at receiver that can really play. We've got to put him in those situations where he can make those throws. So I wanted to show you those two got two things, show our fans those two things, and just help us understand, like, we, are, we will find something that we can do, that we're good at, put him in comfortable situations, and we've got to make sure that he's confident. And we're showing him things like this. Hey, man, you've done this before. And, and him having the confidence to go do that th those things again. Uh, and, and until Dosen gets back, he's our guy. So, like, he needs to know that. He's got to hear that. He hears it from us in practice. We're going to coach him hard because he's got to make some progress. But there's things that he can do, and he's got arm strength – uh, that we can put him in certain situations and have, have some success with it. Yeah, so uh, again, Coach Akins, we appreciate you taking the time 
uh, to do the film breakdown, Mr. Evers, who remotely from Colorado oh, was right. able to, nice. uh, you know, jump on here and make sure that, you know, everything ran smooth. So we appreciate Mr. Evers and everything he does. Uh, so with that, uh, so, go ahead, Coach. So Friday night, uh, I, it is a different time. We're looking at 7.30 kickoff time. Uh, so 7.30 kickoff time at Howard. They have a beautiful new field. Their field is absolutely gorgeous. They did a great job on the turf. Uh, down in, at all three Hamilton County schools that got turf. Uh, they did an outstanding job on those. So excited to go play down there uh, on their new turf. Uh, we've talked with their administrators. They feel great about hosting us. We feel great about going down. Uh, so really excited to kick off fall break uh with, with a game down at Howard uh, and get back into region play and, and get back uh and see our guys compete again yeah. I, I think once you when you suffer a loss you want to get to the field quicker uh and I, I feel that out of our guys so excited about Friday night yeah got to get it back on the right track and uh we've got full faith that the Mustangs will uh excited about going down to Howard you mentioned the new turf down there not to mention a couple years ago they completely renovated the whole stadium mm -hmm. so nice facilities mm -hmm. down there yeah. uh I'm excited about the press box. Unfortunately, Jacob's not going to be with me this Friday night, uh, but a special treat for everybody that tunes in and listens on WCLE 99.1. Former Mustang Brody Swafford oh, will man. be joining That's the party with me. us. That's exciting. Yeah, so we're excited to have Brody join us uh, in place of Jacob, and you know we'll, we'll give Jacob our well wishes and move on without him. Absolutely. But uh, other than that, guys, uh, you know, great show. Appreciate you doing the film breakdown once again, Jacob. You got anything else? No, nah, man. Excited. Good luck this week, Coach. Appreciate it, brother. All right, with that, you've been watching the Walker Valley Football Coaches Show, and you'll be able to catch the game against Howard on WCLE Sports 99.1, kickoff at 730.